Prima Facey, it's as simple as as selling a soap or a detergent or a shampoo. But at the end of the day, our brands also, because they are used day in day out, really have the ability to connect with consumers. So, Abhinav, you know, is it going to be a busy week for you? Yeah, yeah, this is a week after coming back from leave, so yeah. it's quite crazy. Everybody's New Year resolution seems to be to grow the brand more faster. But this is a good break. We are sitting here today uh, to just discuss our time in HOL and what the future holds. So, I mean, before, you know, we, we sit and think, why don't, why don't you just let us know, uh, you know, how has your journey so far been? Uh, how long actually have you been That's in the right. organization? Yeah, I feel old. I am, uh, by the way, I'm Abhinav Ravi Kumar for, uh, for everyone. I currently handle H&H um, uh, Innovations. I've been in this company for 10 and a half years, including my UFLP time. So it was 2012, May, when I joined this company uh, with very fresh and wide eyes. My journey has been interesting, actually, and, um, and I've had the experience, uh, and I've been lucky to have the experience and exposure of doing different roles in sales and marketing in my last 10 years. I started off two years in sales in Telangana at that point in time, in 2012, 13 and 14, and then did Hyderabad for some time, then moved as a trade category manager in uh, trade marketing uh, for home care for two years. And then I did my role as a brand manager, but more activations and what we call brand building in, in HUL, leading Rin and Sunlight, two of the big uh, laundry brands in, um, in HUL. And then uh, two years I did brand development, which is more on communication, proposition, making films, etc. on Vim, which is the biggest dishwash brand in the country. And for the last one year, I've been heading home and hygiene innovations for South Asia as a whole, which is India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, and Nepal. Yeah. So I think every role takes the learnings from the previous role and, and, and sort of adds up to it. So that's been quite, quite a fun ride uh, yeah. as far as my journey is concerned. I'm going to make a big assumption here. Yes, Assuming sir. that your bosses and your teams don't watch this video or, or take it sportily any which way, what has been your most favorite uh, ro uh, you know, role ah, that you've been Yeah, that's been a tough a question. Of. Yeah, if I had to put in, I wouldn't say favorite role, but the role where I think I had the maximum impact on the brand as well as uh, I learned a lot from it has been my Vim role. Okay. More than 60 to 70 percent of our population uses the brand on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and hence, whatever you do, a small change you make sitting as a brand manager can have an impact to say 60-70% of the population. That, that scale is mind-boggling when you see it that way. I must admit, 10 years in HL makes you wise enough to say that your current role is the best role that you've had so far. Yeah. So what about you? You so, handle Taza, so how has yeah. been your experience? Yeah. Actually, my experience has been, uh, you know, it's, it's been a contrast of roles mm. if, I, if I look back. So I joined the company about five and a half years back, did the first year of the Wonderful uh, management training stint where, where you go, go across various functions. Great learning experience. Then I was an area sales manager in Bihar uh, for a couple of years. So I was looking after the home care and the foods and refreshments portfolio there. Then I moved to e-commerce. So from rural Bihar uh, distribution, very classical distribution to, to the jazzy world of e-com. And now I'm on Taza. Uh, which uh, is one of the largest tea brands in the country. It is the largest tea brand by volume. Almost about 30% of, of the country consumes a cup of Taza at least once a year. I am responsible for both mix creation and mix deployment because it's uh, so, so it's responsible for, let's say, in-month media planning, pricing, okay. etc. As well as what the future holds for the brand in the form of communication or innovation. I don't think a lot of people would know that, you know, that brand managers actually go uh, to consumer households and interact with them. If you could shed light on, on what some of the really great experiences that you've had where you've encountered consumers in their surroundings, right, in their setups and what, what has that, yeah. you know, left with you professionally or personally. Yeah. And uh, there's an interesting insight. actually. One of the thoughts we picked up on saying, we are not able to get market share in this particular district or a particular village. We, I don't know how much Rin sells. There was a beautiful uh, insight uh, one of my uh, team members had. He said that, hey, the best way to find out your market share is go to the dump yard and see how much of Rin bar wrappers are there or how much of wheel wrappers are there. And I'm saying it's just like 
so normal, right? And because yeah. the whole village dumps in a certain place, yeah. just by looking at it, you'll get an idea on saying that you know, you know, how much of a share you have yeah. in that particular village. I'm saying you never think about these things unless and until you go and travel yeah. and meet the world. Mm. So these are some anecdotes. What yeah. about you? So Taza as a brand is is really always about the underdog story, right? Yeah. As in, it's it's really about how you can give it back. Uh, to people who are coming and not letting you progress in life and this is consumer verbatim what i'm going to share with you i was in i was in raipur rural raipur uh, and and there was this consumer who put it so succinctly that atyachar sehna atyachar karne se zyada bada zulm hai and that's where she said you know that the protagonist stands up to somebody who's just coming uh, in in the way of her do, going about doing her job normally and to imagine that a consumer in rural raipur connects so strongly with your brand yeah because it's at the end of the day it's a tea brand right there are probably hundreds of categories and thousands of brands that a consumer gets exposed to on a daily basis but to see that they really connect with a piece of work that our team has has put out for them and and it strengthens their association with the brand really uh, busted another big myth for me which is around advertising yeah to say that just like you said right it's uh, prima facie it's as simple as as selling a soap or a detergent or a shampoo but at the end of the day our brands also because they are used day in day out really have the ability to connect with consumers and the stories we tell are are seen by many and therefore connecting with consumers frequently getting that pulse right uh becomes ever so important i think that's a big point and i remember one more story very recently so we have done a vim liquid film in that so the 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 larger insight we were trying to target was on saying that society thinks that the household chores are only a woman's job right when we went to the consumer we asked her for example saying that you know does your husband help uh, etc does your husband do the chores and stuff she said it very beautifully she's like uh, when my mother in law is not there my husband helps mm. yeah uh, it's a small romantic moment between us which we do and we heard this common thought across different places and then what we did was we heard this and then we went and spoke to certain men saying that hey why don't you help what, what is wrong and why uh, why do you help it in 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 when your mother in law is not there or in secret he's like you know what will people think of me if i do dishes at home okay and that's what the bulk of the country thinks because we were barking up the wrong tree mm-hmm. yeah uh, there are many men who want to do it but they don't do it because society perceives mm-hmm. them as not masculine yeah. and as we totally shifted our communication to a certain extent where he said it's not a question of naming and shaming them to do it it's a question of normalizing men doing this yeah. there's this really interesting piece around vim black that's going around yeah. can you just care to elaborate yes, on it yes i know it? so uh, vim black has clearly divided opinion on the uh, internet also vim black for those who don't know i hope you know is an ad which uh, which is a satire which talks about how uh, men like to brag when they do dishes and hence uh, we launched a vim a fake launch of vim um, black for men uh, to easy to clean and please clean more and brag more yeah we did a lot of consumer work before putting the ad on air yeah and in the consumer work we realized that more than 90% of the consumers got the satire mm-hmm. yeah got it yeah because they have been exposed to a lot of ott they are smart and what they also get from the thought is been very simple yeah men when they see the ad have a sheepish smile because they know they have done this before yeah i myself have done this before yeah personally when i did uh, dishes i made it a point to tell my uh, wife during lockdown that i have done the dishes but at the same time and hence when they see the ad i felt guilty first yeah mm-hmm. i could sense and when the creative actually narrated the script to me i could sense the men in the room being a little uncomfortable but the women in the room were like right this is what is happening and this is you must be bold to sort of put it on air the kind of response we wanted on the internet and uh, we got that and thankfully to all these people it got went viral also so yeah. which has been good for me when i was uh, a sales manager so now, yeah there was this whole wave of uh, uh, lpgs being distributed uh, to households under the ujwala scheme right now the interesting thing is that if you take away the firewood from the house there is no ash to do the dishes this in in hindsight uh, seems so simple but but probably the vim team back then had had the foresight to see this before you know ujwala became a trend and they accelerated demand generation in districts which had high ujwala adoption and surprise surprise we saw those districts growing a lot faster 
than than let's say the other ones and and that's where i feel that this understanding of how consumer interacts with your brand coupled with an understanding of where the macro environment is moving i think makes for a killer combination yeah. so abhinav if i take let's say the sort of work that you've churned out uh, over the last 10 years and go back to your dorm room in your b school and wake that kid up from from his afternoon nap and show him that hey look this is what you're going to be doing 10 years from now do you think firstly that kid would believe me or and secondly what do you think have been the skills that have been instrumental in delivering this sort of work and and where did you acquire them yeah. because i'm sure you would have a lot of them before the, you joined the company but the company also would have taught yeah. you one or two things right yeah so first and foremost i don't think the kid would have believed uh, what uh, you know what i had done when i joined hul the first thing you should always i think people who are wanting to join hul is the first uflp stint is almost like a second mba from yeah because you unlearn a lot of stuff from mba and learn a lot of practical knowledge uh, which is there i think i echo you in saying that you know the management trainee stint and not i probably your first time as a manager in in your sales role is is literally like another mba because uh, if you look back you know what is it that uh, you learn when you do an mba right? you learn about supply chain you learn about procurement manufacturing sales finance strategy etc and that's what the course offers right but but on a, on an actually fully functioning large organization of the scale of hul uh, and, and i don't mean to uh, say that let's say an mba is is theoretical but at the end of the day people are not going to let's say lose their monthly incentives uh if you make an error in a classroom environment and the beauty of this framework is that hul doesn't penalize you for making mistakes yeah they just ensure that you don't make the same mistake twice that's what is important yeah you make a mistake get the learnings the organization learns from it i think that's the beautiful thing which uh, which hul has okay uh, uh, aditya i think it was a good conversation it helped me also reminisce my journey and i'm sure it happened with you i'm very hungry now uh i don't think this biscuit is enough so let's go and grab some lunch yeah, okay great. thank okay. you see you great thank Bye. you so much